Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And guys, today we are in the Hampshire, the British Tier 7 absolute unit of a heavy cruiser. I say unit in terms of its firepower. Its armor is honestly not the best, and you don't have that much health, as you can see on screen here. But guys, these guns absolutely shred. Think of a heavy cruiser version of a slow reloading mino, basically. Now, this is, I think, a Surrey class, slightly upgraded. Unfortunately, you don't have HE, but again, you don't really need it. Uh, as always, stats and commander guide at the end of the video. And just once again, you know, talking about the Heisen, the Anchorage, the Hampshire, and the Vallejo, all of the stats of these ships could change when they come to the game in their full released form. Uh, if you guys did not know, you should. This is one of four rental ships, I just mentioned the other three, available in the store for a thousand doubloons a piece. But let's get to the game because this is a pretty good game which shows you how strong this ship can be. And honestly, guys, I have yet to lose in this ship. Uh, I will throw up the stats at one point or another. But 14 games all solo because that seems to matter to some people with 100% win rate. Now, of course, that will change. 14 games is definitely not enough to judge a ship. But regardless of that, I hope Wargaming does not change the stats of this ship because I absolutely adore this ship. I think it's a perfect test of your skill as a cruiser captain, but also you can hugely impact games and, and you know, if you get broadsides and just different things like that. But that being said, we are taking a defensive position here. This is one of the many games I've actually been getting recently. I feel like you either get four destroyers or no destroyers, but I am, you know, I'd much rather have no destroyers. So here we are. But as a result of that, we do not have the necessary spotting. Uh, and we're not going to push ahead in this ship with the limited HP you have and, you know, not the absolute best armor. I think you have a 25 millimeter nose. You don't want to be too aggressive. Um, so playing smarter and not harder is definitely going to net you much better results in this ship. Here we threw up one of our three spotter planes. We are not running Arthas on this build. I actually have a wrong commander choice in the second slot, uh, like we mentioned uh, there is no HE on this boat, but I'm actually running the increased fire chance, so uh, we switched that to the longer range torpedo, so an F in chat for Aaron being a bot. But we do have a battleship pushing up here, so we are going to support it. This thing's acceleration from like from zero to half is pretty good, but getting from half to full you're a little sluggish. Uh, and again, this thing is not the most maneuverable, but if you think about your position, and here is just one of those salvos, boom, four pens, one citadel, one over pen. Um, the four, the citadel is included in one of those pens, but but we all knew that, right? And two salvos there in, in right around seven and a half seconds, and that mines, he, he's gone. Now, this was a, a missed shot here because he hit the island, but if we could have gotten RNG on our side for a few of those, and you couple that with potentially an epic reload or legendary mod, and you can just see the DPM and, and alpha strike that you can pump out every seven seconds. Uh, you, you, again, you couple that with a, a reload mod, you could probably get that down to five, you know, maxed out. Also uh, notable is shooting at targets at long range. Uh, you get some of the most obnoxious citadels. Now, whether that is plunging fire or, you know, just the massive pen that these shells have, I don't know. But uh, we, we shot at a pea bag tonight, and I think later on we actually do get a pretty cheeky citadel on this New Orleans. But you will notice that our team is actually pretty weak on the opposite flank. And again, applying the principles of logic, which is something that a lot of the player base just doesn't have anymore. We're going to go support the weak side. We could go up the middle, but again, the ship is not the most maneuverable. You're going to want to utilize island cover, and I know that is going to be difficult for some of my super alpha manly men, uh, but unless you want to blow up, you either need to utilize island cover, a division mate with a smoke screen, or potentially an agile build so you don't get hit. I, again, I never recommend agile builds except for maybe the Italian cruisers, just because I don't think that the trade-off is worth it. The game is yours to play however you want, but I get consistent results by positioning myself better rather than relying on you know my rudder after mispositioning, if that makes sense. That being said, we actually do have a pretty funny troll video coming out. I don't know why I'm having more fun uh, trolling than I am, you know, playing the game. I guess it's just I've reached that point 
you know, in my uh, YouTube slash warships career. But uh, I guess I'm just tired of people that potentially look like this, thinking that they know everything while constantly not performing uh, in, you know, the ships that they're talking about. But regardless of that, if you were in stream tonight, you'll know what I'm talking about. And we will have a, a funny video coming out. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, back to the game here. We are pushing our way to the opposite flank. We have a few battleships we can see on the minimap are all kind of clustered up there. And we're, we honestly just have to wait for them to push. If we push into that, we are absolutely dead. There's no capture points over there, and there's no cover. Uh, now, you do have good concealment in this cruiser. We are running concealment mod with Makawa as an inspiration, and like I said, commander guide at the end of the video. Uh, so you do have, you know, the concealment on your side, but, but if you push into that... You're, you're dead, and we have a great example of this later on towards the end of the video where we almost throw this game, but our teammate does a good job of getting a 1v1 trade. <laughs> Sometimes that's actually all you can ask for of your random teammates, especially on a team like this where you can see that winning was probably not uh, top on their priority list. I think they were having a lot of fun as it uh, is now a 4v7, well, 4v6 now. But the good news is we do have a few battleships out in front of us here, able to spot those battleships. And at this point in the game is generally when those passive enemy ships tend to push. So we have a pretty good crossfire set up here, and we just have to do what the ship does best. There's, there's not much else we can do. Uh, but what the ship does best, and she does it very well, is DPM. Uh, and we're going to have that crossfire and, and this position set up nicely here. We're going to go ahead and take a few of these salvos, but you, we, we really want to remain protected by this island cover here, as we talked about earlier on. You don't have the best armor. Now, you can angle this belt if you get yourself into a defensive kiting position, but uh, here is, is probably the, <laughs> the highlight of the video here it is abusing this vanguard. But don't worry, we get this ship into multiple situations, which shows you the full tool belt that this ship uh, you know, does possess. Torpedoes, decent armor. We get spotted here and we're saying, I literally said on stream, it's the cruiser behind me pushing up the middle. And there she is. The Algier has pushed her way. And at this point, I realized that this thing actually has two 360 degree turrets. As you can see, they're moving in the back there. We get three of them off, or I think two, I'm not exactly sure. And we pop a beautiful double citadel with the four total penetrations there on that Algier. And that is when that Algier realizes we mean business with this AP and he decides to angle up, but it doesn't matter. And in the meantime, we're actually looking using our torpedoes to judge the direction of that enemy vanguard. Uh, and it doesn't matter though, because uh, you know, the AP on the Chalgier, because those penetration angles, he is nearly fully angled and we're still getting penetrations. Now, of course we're aiming high, trying to get that upper belt and good night, thanks for playing. He was full health when he rounded that corner. He wasn't, you know, he, he angled decently well, but the AP, absolutely shredded him. And as we were just mentioning the full tool belt of this ship in terms of utility, here are the torpedoes. Guys, don't don't watch now, but Aaron connects a few torpedoes. We go ahead and launch the first one long. You generally, after battleship players see that first torpedo, they tend to stop. And here we just get probably one of my favorite salvos, 11, 12K on, on that, that Vanguard's broadside. And we're already reloaded. Again, can you imagine if we could get full broadsides like that all the time? Now, uh, you will have to give up angle in order to do so in this Vanguard. Probably, you know, <laughs> could have potentially done more damage to me. But it doesn't matter because we connect two torpedoes. And good night. Thanks for playing. Now, you will notice that we are still down on score. So we will either have to get a kill or get a few seconds in their base in order to get the win in this game. That being said, the Amagi is, is going to be a little bit of a tougher opponent that those Japanese battleships, as you guys learned in stream tonight, if you can position them well, they are plenty good uh, in their own regard uh, in terms of armor and in terms of guns. Uh, usually, unless a ship is, you know, completely just like the Z-44 to me, um, <laughs> All ships have their different traits and perks, which generally, especially if they're tech tree wargaming, is going to keep them relatively balanced. Just on a side note, again, make sure you guys stay tuned for our other troll video. We've, we've got a few of them coming out, but there is that Amagi. He's not being aggressive with it. Also, he is bow tanking, but 
here we learn, right, because that Amagi is not the one spotting us. What is spotting us, right? It has to be that New Orleans. And you can see me looking over there, and he's not popped up just yet until, I think it's like right here, but basically realizing that we were behind island cover for that uh, Amagi, and there is that New Orleans. He was just sitting there waiting for us to potentially make a mistake, but, you know, because we were paying attention to it, he decided to lob on another ship. In the meantime, though, we're actually getting a few overpins or, you know, you know, cheeky penetrations on that Amagi at pretty long range. It's most likely superstructure, but regardless, we're still doing some damage. So taking those shots is always beneficial. And here, oh, it just shows you how good that AP is. Four pens with one being a Citadel and one overpen for nearly half of that New Orleans health. I do have to give this New Orleans a little bit of credit there as we tick another a uh, few penetrations to get us up into the high caliber range. He did, you know, demonstrate that he knew how to angle a little bit. The AP probably would have been more effective there. We actually, we've gotten railed a few times. Um, I actually got crossfired by some gentlemen at 19 kilometers and almost, almost fully deleted. So make sure you're paying attention to your broadside. This thing is, is not as forgiving as some other ships are. Now the Citadel is towards the back. Uh, similar to a few of the other British heavies, but you have to uh, be very careful when sailing, you know, trying to get all guns on target. Here, though, we're waiting to make sure that we don't overcommit, that Iowa was last spotted moving this way. So we're just trying to get the kill on the New Orleans and then sail off into the sunset for the victory. Now, as some of the trolls like to uh, to state on my stream tonight, it may appear as if I am damage hunting, and I am to a certain extent, but that is the only option I have in this game. But you will notice that we damage hunted, which is not what we did, on our terms. We put our ship in the right spot, positioning, utilizing island cover, waiting for the enemy to make mistakes in order to give our team the advantage. The game mode is capture the base, so there's really no point or there's there's no objectives other than potentially getting in the base, and we know on two brothers, it's basically team deathmatch. So what we have done is we've given our team an advantage, and now we can play a little bit with our health, uh, you know, pending the, the battleships in order to push into this New Orleans here, you know, given that we have the concealment advantage in order to give our team the points lead. The game is not that difficult, and understanding these things, yes, it will take some time, but after a while of, you know, constantly losing or wondering why you're getting 500 XP per game, you start to look at things, and I, I very early on in this game, I remember just seeing players, like, we had a, a, a destroyer sail directly into a battleship and, and just throw the game. It's like, why do that, right? You know, why not use your concealment advantage? But there we spot the plane from the New Orleans, so we know that he is close. We hope it's the New Orleans, and here I have no idea what he was doing. He angled in that previous engagement, but for this engagement, he is as wide open as a sorority girl on Halloween or pretty much any event. And here comes a salvo from that Iowa. <laughs> so we get the New Orleans, we get the point trade, but unfortunately that Iowa has us detected due to our uh, gun firing penalty. Now, we know that we will be inside of our concealment, but we just need ourselves to go dark. You can see me saying on stream there, just go dark, and we do. Thank goodness for our concealment. I'm also trying to look at what our uh, concealment by plane is, but it's it's generally pretty good if your concealment is pretty good. And we do have our team moving in to take some shots off of this guy, but with how low we are, I can't risk shooting here. I really wanted to, and I should have just kept reversing but I didn't know who was going to be spotting that guy, and it really doesn't matter. We don't need the kill here, although this guy has decided to sit in the back and utilize all of his health, not really until the last 60 seconds. If you're in close games, and I've said this before, your ship's health should match the, 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 the time in the game, right? Use the first third of your health in the opening five minutes, not ideally, but... If, if you've, you know, in the last 60 seconds of a game and you have 75% of your health and all your team is dead, you probably didn't position correctly. The same goes uh, for my gentleman in Shard's B-Spawn. If you're missing all of your health in the first five minutes, you probably didn't position correctly. But these are all principles and lessons I have mentioned numerous times. Here, you're wondering why I'm not shooting. Well, 
uh, it's because if he kills us, we potentially lose that point differential. So we just need to survive and live, and, and that way we can win the game. Now, I did shoot with eight seconds here uh, with a seven-second shell travel time, and we actually get one overpen as he would have died, but unfortunately, uh, we, we just missed it by about a half a second there. Um, so that was me being cheeky at the, at the end, but a first place finish with a 2741 XP, three kills and the high caliber here. Let's go ahead and review the stats though for you guys of the Hampshire here. Survivability, you saw it in game, 37,600. The artillery, 203 millimeter, five by two of them, so 10 total, with a 16.1 kilometer firing range and eight second reload, which you could get a touch lower with a few other inspirations and a 180 turn time of 26.5. So the guns are are really the selling point of this ship. The AP max uh, shell damage there is 5,115. So if you're touching targets, man, that is a lot of damage. Um, and then of course the secondaries with that with that HE per, you know six percent fire chance which we talked about. The torpedoes, which this range is going to be a little bit different than it was in game. I had uh, a wrong commander perk selected. I'll show you guys that when we go over the commander. Uh, four by two by four here with of course the British having the option to single fire which you saw in that Vanguard is very effective when you can you know get them in position but a 11 kilometer range there with the upgraded or the correct commander perk and a 62 knot speed AA defense it's just going over these stats is kind of irrelevant for most people because they're not going to understand them number one and this number doesn't mean anything the 60 is just kind of a number they throw up there you're really looking for the long range AA as well as your mid range which is actually the mid range is kind of decent but by the time the mid range is hitting the, the you know the planes are already probably finished with their strike so just something for you guys to keep in mind the maneuverability is average 31.8 top speed with a 710 turning circle and a 7.8 rudder i'm sure you could get this thing super agile but again the main selling point of this ship is the guns and if you're not running fraser with the the penetration multiplier and yamamoto as inspirations you're not getting the most out of the ship again run the ship however you want but you guys saw that when you can position correctly and get those guns on target they are devastating especially with with our commander build concealment is pretty good as well that's uh, we do have a, an inspiration for that to get it down just a touch lower you can get in into situations but a little bit better with more concealment you can also get out of them as you saw at the end there with that iowa but those are the stats let's go ahead and review the commander and, and explain a little bit of what we're talking about I see Mino players shooting at me from 17 kilometers, and I just wonder why. Be because you're not, at, at 18 kilometers with refill station, you're just not doing enough to, to justify you taking one or two citadels at that range that battleships can potentially hit you at. So I always recommend Piercer, with the exception of maybe like the Albemarle or you know some other British heavy with HE. Piercer is a much better option, especially for the AP only you know, lights, and in this case, the heavy. Uh, here is the perk we, we we had in that game. So we literally, our second slot was completely wasted. I don't even think I got in secondary range except for one time, maybe with that Vanguard. So a complete waste. And this, you know, this perk is much better. You could, you could argue this one as well, but this is the one we're running. Punch through as well. You want as much into the AP as possible. Now one commander inspiration you could also argue for is Von Essen, which we're not running. But on top of that, we are running fixated. You could, you could make the argument for either of these. You don't necessarily need the most accuracy, but uh, I just don't think you're getting enough with steer clear. And then we are running refill station to have that touch of range when we're near an ally, but also that reload. Again, on ships like this, you want DPM, and that is and that is what we get with refill station. Mr. Yamamoto here for, again, the added AP shell penetration multiplier. You could, again, we, we talked about Von Essen. Sometimes you want that increased range, but if you can position and get the broadsides as we did in another game on stream last night, it just pays off to have that, that extra multiplier there. And then of course, Mikawa for concealment. This is just how I'm building the ship. It doesn't make it you know completely right, but that is just how I'm building, you know, like I just said, how I'm building the ship and, and what I think is most effective. I'm building into the strengths and, and you know negating a few of its weaknesses there in terms of you know weak armor. And speaking of armor, after we go over our modifications here, we will, why do I have, why do I have this in my secondary? Oh, oh, I don't. <laughs> I clicked on the first modification slot. I was wondering, I was like, why do I have secondaries? Aiming systems, steering, because you can't have anything else. You could 
I, I would run steering over that. Concealment, and then reload, of course. Uh, but let's take a look at the armor so I can show you guys kind of what I'm talking about here. The nose, you've got a, oh, I don't know why it's all deselected, but uh, the nose is 25 millimeters here and it takes up a large portion of the front of that ship. That's probably how we got touched by the Iowa. That or the Iowa simply overmatched the 27, which is surrounding this boat. This is a floating tin can, guys. So if you can angle, like we talked about that, those defensive positions, you could potentially bounce a few of the shells off of your Citadel belts. You've got what, what is it, 120, 152. So you, you can bounce things off that Citadel belt if you're angled, but they're probably just gonna be overmatching your 27 if they're 406s. If not, then yes, you can you can angle against that. But with how weak that 25 is all over the ship, this is a tin can. I, I don't, you know, be expecting for this thing to explode. Like we talked about, I, I got yeeted uh, one of my games across map. And that is the reason why a moderately large citadel now you are protected like we talked about a good portion of that citadel is not shown in the front so if you're aiming at this ship smokestack and back uh, so yeah but uh, guys that is the hampshire surgical shells sequential and flare for piercing i really enjoy this ship i don't think a lot of you know the the, the people who have to play the weimar to have a good game are going to enjoy this ship because it takes a little bit of skill uh, but that being said, if you can get yourself in the right spots, you can get the broadsides and you can, you know, think and breathe at the same time and, and, and get into position. I think this ship is really fun. It's, it's a, it's breaking the mold a little bit for me. I'm sure in, in 10 weeks, I won't play it that much, but for right now it, it's a fun rental. And again, of course the stats could change with the rentals, but if you're looking for the rentals in the store, I've already gone over this, but I'm on my console now. So we can show you here. Go over to the ships tab, hit RT or RB, and then RT all the way over for ships for test. And we have yet to rent the Vallejo. That will be the next one on my list. And yeah, here they are. You get seven days for a thousand doubloons. Not the not the best deal in my opinion, but that's just what it is. Hope you guys had a great uh, time watching this video, and I hope you have a great day. I love you guys. Uh, take it easy. A run out. Peace.